What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrow share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. My dear brothers and sisters, my name is Father Simon Peter, and I welcome you to our celebration of Mass, of Eucharist, on this 30th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our readings today continue to invite us to reflect on the theme of prayer. That's why I chose that beautiful song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. And what a privilege we have to take to him, not some things, but everything in prayer. And so we begin our celebration in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, for the times that we have not taken everything to God in prayer. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess, Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty of a living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, 
and make us love what you command so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sirach. The Lord is a God of justice who knows no favorites. Though not unduly partial toward the weak, yet he hears the cry of the oppressed. The Lord is not deaf to the wail of the orphan, nor to the widow when she pours out her complaint. The one who serves God willingly is heard. His petition reaches the heavens. The prayer of the lowly pierces the clouds. It does not rest till it reaches its goal, nor will it withdraw till the Most High responds, judges justly and affirms the right, and the Lord will not delay. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The, the Lord, Lord hears, hears the, the cry, cry of the poor. poor. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord confronts the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them, and from all their distress he rescues them. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and those who are crushed in spirit he saves. The Lord redeems the lives of his servants. No one incurs guilt who takes refuge in him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I am already being poured out like a libation, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have competed well. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just judge, will award, me to, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearance. At my first defense, no one appeared on my behalf, but everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the proclamation might be completed and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will re rescue me from every evil threat and will bring me safe to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ and entrusting to us the message of salvation. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus addressed his parable to those who were convinced of their own righteousness and despised everyone else. Two people went up to the temple area to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other was a tax collector. The Pharisee took up his position and spoke this prayer to himself. O oh God, I thank you that I am not like the rest of humanity, greedy, 
dishonest, adulterous, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and I pay tithe on my whole income. But the tax collector stood off at a distance and would not even raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast and prayed, O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, the latter went home justified, not the former. For whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and the one who humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. It is always good to remember God's goodness, that His goodness is there for us all the time. And I'd like us to know that, especially when things are not going well, because when things are not going well, it's very easy for us to fall into the trap to think that God is no longer good. God has abandoned us. This Sunday, we continue the theme from last Sunday, focusing on prayer. Last Sunday, the focus was praying persistently, praying without getting weary, praying without ceasing, a challenge for all of us to be a people of prayer. Not just praying sometimes, but praying all the time. But why? Because prayer is our relationship with God. Prayer is what enables us to tap into the goodness of God. And so the more we have constant prayer, the more we tap into that goodness of God at all times. When we don't pray, then we rely on ourselves. Then we are left to our own machinations. Today, we continue refining on prayer, focusing more and more on prayer. What is effective prayer? What makes a good prayer? And two virtues are lifted up to us that accompany good prayer. We find this in the first reading and in the gospel reading. And these two virtues are the virtues of humility, being humble. So important for us to be humble in the disposition of our prayer. When we are humble, we recognize who we are. The prayer of the humble, the prayer of the lowly, pierces the heart of God. The prayer of the humble reaches the heavens. The other is avoiding pride. Pride. When we pride ourselves, when we consider ourselves better than others, then our prayers are not effective. In the Gospel reading, we hear this manifested in a very special way in the parable that Jesus tells. But before Jesus tells a parable, the Gospel tells us that Jesus addressed this parable to those who were convinced of their own righteousness and despised everyone else those who are prideful. It talks about two people who went out to the temple to pray, a tax collector and a Pharisee. Let's begin with the Pharisee. Look at his prayer. 
Oh God, I thank you that I'm not like the rest of humanity who are greedy, dishonest, adulterous, or even like this tax collector. So this sounds like a good man. He's not greedy, he's not dishonest, he's not adulterous. And then he begins comparing himself to others, the tax collector. Yes, while all those things he mentioned were good, I don't know whether there was something in himself. Was he sin free? Was he righteous? Was it his business to compare himself to others? After all, our call to holiness is not to compare ourselves to others, but ultimately to God. Be perfect, not, others are perf not as others are perfect, but as your heavenly Father is perfect. So we should not be comparing ourselves to others. On the other hand, the tax collector, simple prayer, turns to God. He would not even raise his eyes to heaven. O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. O oh God, help me in my sinfulness. And Jesus tells us that the tax collector went home justified and the Pharisee did not. The Pharisee who fasted twice a week paid his tithe. My brothers and sisters, this is a challenge for all of us. It's a temptation that comes to us from our fallen nature, a temptation to compare ourselves to others. My brothers and sisters, as we continue on our journey of faith, the reminder to us today is to embrace that disposition of humility. Humility before God, acknowledging who we are, acknowledging our dependence upon God, our need for God, our need for ongoing purification, St. Paul himself, the great apostle, he said, I have not yet achieved, I have not yet made it, but continuing to strive day by day to that goal. Like the tax collector, acknowledging our sinfulness, our need for God's mercy, our constant need for God's mercy, may we strive on in our journey of faith. Prayer is so important for us in our journey of faith. May we strengthen our prayer life by not only praying persistently without getting weary, but also praying with humility and trust in God. Amen. The Lord be with you. We take a moment of silence as we allow the Word of God preached and proclaimed to find a place in our hearts. And now we profess our faith, reaffirming our belief in God. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, 
light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one love for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My brothers and sisters, confident in God's love for us, God's mercy for us, we now turn to him as we present our prayers of petition. that the Church may continue to be graced with his shepherds after Christ's own heart, who lead his Church with loving care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That civic leaders may be guided by the Holy Spirit and always working for the common good. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord may be close to the brokenhearted and save those crushed in spirit by poverty or oppression. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Holy Spirit may cleanse us of self-righteousness and teach us to pray with humility. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have died may live in glory forever in heaven with God and all of the saints and angels. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That through the intercession of Our Lady of Prompt Succor, we may be spared all loss of life and property this hurricane season. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all victims of war and disaster, especially those in the Ukraine and Florida, may feel the presence of God during this time. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We now conclude our prayers by praying for the gift of a new bishop for our diocese. O God, eternal shepherd, who govern your flock with unfailing care, grant in your boundless fatherly love a pastor for your church, a bishop for the diocese of Homotibidum, who will please you by his holiness and to us show watchful care. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. To the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the divine work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is right, and right to give you thanks. Truly just to give you glory. Father most holy. For you are the one God. Living and true. Existing before all ages. And abiding for all eternity dwelling in an approachable light, yet you, who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that ease, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night, and gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. With them, we too confess your name in exaltation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give you praise, Father most holy. For you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image, and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all so that those who seek might find you. Time and again, you offered them covenants and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time, you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that might live no longer for ourselves, but for him, who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. And therefore, Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, for the celebration of this great mystery which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. And therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis our Pope and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with your blessed apostles and saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world, all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who say to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look, not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that he should enter under my roof, 
but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Prayer of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my heart. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, before the final blessing, just to thank you for joining in this celebration. And as we are called to prayer, to invite all of us to that disposition of prayer, praying not only for ourselves, but also for others, especially those in most need. We stand in solidarity in a special way with our brothers and sisters in Florida in the aftermath of Hurricane Ian and those suffering war in Ukraine and other places. Remember that prayer that pierces the heart of God, that pierces the heavens, is prayer of the lowly, of the humble. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God come upon you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Praise Thanks be to God. God. Prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, pass into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Saint Francis de Sales, Pray for us, Saint Joseph. Pray for us. We're now concluding by again singing the last verse of What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Are we weak and heavy laden? 
come but with the Lord of care. Precious Saviour, still a refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise, forsake thee? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Thou wilt find a solace there.